how like eventually you'll you'll figure out your uh your point of view first of all like a lot of communists i know hate ai like ai oh is just heart, ai like communism oh, is guy. completely separate from artificial hey listen hassan this is how you know you're a fucking hassan where did you get the confidence to feel that you're informed enough to draw that conclusion. Do you really know what the consequences AI has for communism, Hassan? Have you thought about it? Because a lot of thinkers have thought about it and are thinking about it. Still, where do you get this arrogant idea that you can draw a line here, Hassan? You may not know the connection. You may have not engaged with it or thought about it. But other people who are smarter and more knowledgeable than you have artificial intelligence okay exactly dude hassan marx wrote a piece called fragment on machines none of this is resolved dude none of it is resolved you're trying to gatekeep communism and make it seem like communism is some kind of like you know thing that's that someone just knows about and it's you're trying to gatekeep something you don't even understand yourself okay it's completely a separate concept Marx no it's not Leninism Marxism or communism or socialism revolves entirely around the means of production who Hassan you're literally mentally retarded do you not realize that AI is part of the forces of production do you know what do you even know anything dude have you thought about anything have you thought about any of this dude before you decided to talk about it, have you thought of, do you think the means of, why would you draw the line when it comes to means of production so arbitrarily at the level of uh, factories? You know what I mean? Do you not realize that AI is literally a means of production, like information and the digital uh, sphere and AI actually facilitates the production process? and how goods are manufactured and distributed, especially distributed across the world. But did you even think about this, Hassan? Did you think? Did you think? Did you think before you talked about this? Did you think? You're trying to gatekeep something against Grimes. You don't fucking understand yourself. This pisses me off. Hassan pissed me off here. He honestly pissed me off. He pissed me off. He acts like he understands this shit. He knows about it. He fucking doesn't. Who owns the means of production and how profits are generated or how well. Hassan. Hassan. Who owns the means of production? Who owns the means of production? Hassan, it's 2021. Do you actually think any one individual owns a given means of production? Even CEOs don't fucking own it. Shareholders do. Wealth is generated and accumulated as a consequence. Hassan, do you even know the implications AI has for the generation of profit? Have you thought about anything you're saying? Niobium donated two Canadian dollars through Super Chat. Hassan sounds like every other leftoid out there. He honestly does, and thank you for the two, but he really fucking does. It's pissing me off. Why is he trying to gatekeep communism when he doesn't even fucking know what he's talking about? The relationship between communism and AI is a topic so thoroughly explored by intellectuals who consider themselves adjacent to communism that for Hassan to say there's, they're completely different is the most stupid fucking thing I've ever heard. Reza Negaristani wrote a fucking book. You want to know what this book is called? It's called Intelligence and Spirit. And in this book, Negaristani defines artificial intelligence. And he's used the word AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. As literally the socius, as the collective and social sphere uh, of uh, the reality. And you know what that means? It means communism literally is AI. Is Hassan smarter than him? Because for him, communism is AI. It's the same thing as AI, actually. It's actually the same thing as AI.
But you've never thought about any of this, Hassan. And that's okay. You don't have to think about it. But don't fucking get on your Twitch and try, start trying to gatekeep communism to normies like you have some special knowledge that they don't. Because you don't have any knowledge they don't, Hassan. All you know is the sentence, the means of production, and that stupid fucking meme that BreadTube taught you. But beyond that, you really don't know what you're talking about, Hassan. You really don't. Consequence of Some exploitation. That's why Marxists say he's using words he doesn't understand. What do you mean exploitate? What are you talking about? Shut the fuck up and go back to fucking playing Among Us with AOC, Hassan. You don't know what you're talking about. What is he talking about? <laughs> he's 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 giving like this simplistic cookie cutter fake definition of Marxism that has nothing to do with actual Marxist literature, and he's fumbling words like, okay, Hassan, how is exploitation, if you know what that even means within Marxism, how is that unrelated to AI? In what universe is that unrelated to AI? How is AI a completely different concept, completely unrelated to the value form? In 2021. How, how could you fucking say that? Do you know why data is so valuable in 2021, Hassan? You want to know why data is so fucking valuable? Because these algorithms, algorithms need data to work, to produce any results. And data is super profitable, dude. It is super profitable. So how does exploitation and value figure into that? Guess what, Hassan? You don't know. Even these titanic Marxist intellectuals don't know. They're literally trying to figure that out. They're trying so hard to figure it out. But you're out here saying they're completely... How could they be unrelated, Hassan, when, when, when data is so profitable? Data is the new... Oil. Data is giving Marxist theorists even more trouble than oil did. And you're saying they're unrelated? You don't know what you're talking about. Who's Robin? I don't even see Robin. Robin, debate Haas, then if he's so dumb. Where's Robin? I don't see Robin. They must have gotten banned from the chat already for being a pussy. Oh, Robin Sparks. I'm trans, so I know you guys would just bully the fuck out of me. Shut the fuck up, Robin, you fucking idiot. Stop trying to hide behind your fucking sexual... No one gives a shit. Nobody gives a fuck what your gender identity is, you fucking moron. You're objectively a fucking idiot trying to hide behind that shit like I give a fuck. You're a fucking moron, you're stupid, and you should go to bed feeling like you're stupid, because that's what you fucking are. Nobody gives a shit that you're fucking trans. Until you fucking brought it up. Nobody gives a shit. You fucking idiot. You're stupid. You should go to bed and you should feel stupid. And you should feel bad for being so stupid. Why don't you be trans intelligent? We don't care that you're transgender. Nobody gives a fuck. Talk to me when you can be some trans intelligent. When you can go beyond the fucking tiny peanut brain intelligence that you have now. Daniel Backer donated five Canadian dollars through Super Chat. Please confront him about the fact that he hasn't even read the first chapter of the first volume of Das Capital. Daniel, here's the thing. He doesn't have to. He honestly doesn't have to. But what he can't be doing is being a fucking pretentious gatekeeper like Hassan has access to some knowledge no one else does about this topic. Like Hassan knows his shit about this topic. In a way that Grimes doesn't. Because he fucking doesn't. He doesn't know shit. Hassan knows nothing about what he's talking about. Take it from me. I will... I am so confident in what I'm telling you when I tell you that Hassan knows nothing about this topic. That I am willing to risk... Literally, I'm willing to risk... Putting my fucking cock in a fucking guillotine and letting go and i'll say god if i'm right miraculously stop the guillotine and i'll stop it and i'm so confident i'm right about this 
that he doesn't know anything about this topic, then I believe there will be a miraculous intervention that is going to stop the guillotine from falling. I'm willing to risk that. Prophet is theft. It has nothing to do with like automation and artificial intelligence. It can be good or it can be bad. You can have. It has nothing to do with it. Hassan, you disgusting fuck. Your whole fucking career is built off of artificial intelligence. It's the fucking algorithms that propelled you to the fucking place you are now. What are you talking about? It's unrelated. These bread tubers want to. You know what these bread tubers want to do? These Hassan bread tubers? They want to prevent Prometheus's gift from reaching you, the people. They want to hide the Promethean fire that will liberate the masses. Oh, oh, guys, 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 I'm BreadTube. AI and uh, the new economy is the very reason why I'm relevant. But no, no, guys, it's irrelevant. It has nothing to do with communism. Just look at my smiling face. Don't, don't investigate the deeper implications of A. Don't investigate anything. Just look at my smiling face. That's all you need. Just this. That's all you need. That's all this. Fucking bitch. Have a communist country, or not a communist country, but an international uh, communist uh, future. Where He's trying to create this fake version of Marxism that only exists in the 19th century. And then he's going, well, yeah, it could be compatible with these new technologies, or it could not be. You know, it's not really relevant. No, Hassan, Marxism is not something that exists in the past. Marxism is only real and only meaningful if it is always reinvented based on the time you live in now. If Marx was living right now, I promise you he would have a lot to say about AI. A lot. He just wasn't living in a time period in which it was relevant. Now it, it, the world has changed. You can't be a Marxist. You can't understand Marx. You can't understand Lenin. You can't understand anything about any of this shit if you don't live in the 21st century and if you do not imperil your soul in the fucking technologies and realities that exist now. So no, it's not unrelated, you fucking idiot. Where there is artificial intelligence. Just like you can have a dystopian, feudalistic hellhole that has artificial intelligence oh, that is ass. still capitalist. Implemented correctly. What? How could it be still capitalist if it's feudal? What the fuck are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about, dude. You literally don't know what you're fucking talking about. Uh, AI problem. could actually theoretically solve for abundance. Like, we could totally get to a situation where nobody has to work. You know what pisses me off? If Hassan actually had a solid critique of this, that would be fine. But he's treating, he's calling Grimes a baby, even though what Grimes is saying is something, there are literally multiple books written about this, bestseller, bestseller books about Falk, fully all automated luxury con. It's literally been here for years and years and years. She's not saying anything new or crazy or, or childish. You know, Hassan, do you know anything? Do you know anything? Everybody is provided for with a comfortable state of being. I'm sick of this living. bullshit, you know? Here's the truth. I'm the alpha. Hassan's the beta. That's the truth. Look, you guys are listening to this fucking moron. You stupid fucking people. You've been 20,000 to 30,000 of you a day watch this fucking moron. And he doesn't know shit. He doesn't. Imagine a guy who actually knows shit. Like me. Literally, he's a fucking airhead. He's an airheaded idiot. He's literally stupid as shit. He literally doesn't know what he's fucking talking about. I'm the fucking Sultan here. I'm Sultan. I'm Sultan. AI could Sweet. automate all the farming, weed out systematic corruption, thereby bringing us to as close as possible to genuine equality. So basically, everything that everybody loves about communism, but without the collective farm. Because let's be real, enforced start. farming is really not a vibe. It's really not a vibe. <laughs> 
what the fuck towards the end of this she's like i really did something here you know what i mean like you can tell you can tell she's like i'm i'm hassan who the fuck are you to talk about other people other boomers acting cringe to appeal to zoomers because hassan that's all you fucking do hassan all you fucking do is do cringe you are literally the definition of cringe who the fuck are you to talk about grimes I'm about to pop off on this like on the second part of this she's like bro i'm literally gonna pop the fuck off right here this notion that like communists are anti-ai is so fucking stupid like why the fuck would they also there's like a no she's actually right because you're fucking ignorant you're just ignorant you don't live in the 21st century you're just literally arrogant and ignorant Literally, if you, if you shut your mouth, you would have done everyone a fucking favor. But you had to go and say, oh, they're completely unrelated. No, they're not, Hassan. The most contemporary, vibrant thinkers of communism and Marxism take AI seriously. It's as simple as that. Just keep your fucking mouth shut. 11 communists on the planet. Like, what are you talking about? Who cares if they're like anti-AI or not? And two... None of this has anything why to do to with pass. communism. Three. And why would you say that? Like, I just wanted to, like, where, where, where did you fucking muster the confidence to say such a stupid fucking thing? Please tell me where you got the confidence to say that. I want to know, like, where did you get the fucking... Where did you muster the audacity to say such a stupid fucking, stupid fucking brain-dead thing? You know what I mean? Like... Where did you get that? Where did you, where, who told you that? Who fucking told you that, you fucking idiot? Who fucking told you that? Who told you that? Did someone tell you that? Because they lied to you. They don't know what they're talking about. And the person who replied really well to this, I reached out to them after this because I was like, damn, dude, you really fucking, you really responded po like. He, if he's going to say Anthony Fantano, you know for a fact Hassan's the biggest fucking moron on the internet. If he's going to say the, the needle drop guy, you know for a fact Hassan is a grade A retard. Grade A retard. Perfectly to this, even though he said he hasn't read that much theory. Let's watch uh, what uh, Melon Boy had to say, because he perfectly, hey, yo. he perfectly claps at the heart of the problem. Who's I Melon probably Boy? shouldn't say. Literally, I fucking called it. I literally fucking called it. Now you know for a fact Hassan's a fucking retard. Remember when I covered this on stream? Remember when I covered this fucking idiot's TikTok on stream and I covered why he's a fucking moron, doesn't know what he's talking about? Oh, because the forces of production are irrelevant. What matters is political ownership. No, it's... So stupid and anti-Marxist. This is all Western leftists say. The forces of production are irrelevant to communism. It's just about who politically exercises sovereign ownership. And the way they define sovereign ownership is literally direct, like, direct decision-making control, like voting. Like, like, if you work in a toilet factory, you're all going to sit down democratically and decide how many toilet paper you produce. No, there's no objectivity to the forces of production. There's nothing that has to be calculated objectively based on reality. No, no, no. It's all based on what we want and our fifis. All society is going to be organized around the fifis of lefty snowflakes. And we're going to be able to tyrannically decide every fucking minute detail of life. Literally, the most biggest nightmare of totalitarianism you can imagine would be this society. Let me tell you guys something. I'm going to explain this to you very simply, right? When it comes to this left-wing totalitarianism that they're trying to do democratically, um, they have this straw man that we communists, we want to authoritatively impose our own decisions in the stead of their voices. No, no. Read Deng Xiaoping carefully. Read Chinese Marxists carefully. It's not that we want our voices to trump yours. It's that we don't want anyone's voices to matter when it comes to most aspects of life. We want the forces of production to take care of themselves. And then we want the freedom and the wiggle room for let the strongest survive in terms of culture. Because they want to tyrannically decide our culture democratically. 
And th what they're really talking about is culture, right? Because why would a pencil factory need to democratically decide anything except the workplace culture? That's, that's the only thing. Like, why else would you need to have a vote on anything? The only room for arbitrary subjective choice is culture. Because you're not going to be able to subjectively determine the material uh, realities of how shit is calculated and, you know, what machines you objectively are going to be need to be used. Like, you can't, right? The only wiggle room for subjectivity, human subjectivity, is culture. And they think that we tankies, we authoritarians, just want to impose our own will over culture instead of their voices. No. This is what I'm talking about, the crisscross alliance between the top left and the bottom right. The alliance between libertarians and tankies is what I'm talking about. We literally don't want you to have any power whatsoever over culture. We want culture to exist organically in a non-negotiable way. Let culture be culture. Let it be. Leave it alone, laissez-faire. That's what we believe. Let communities decide based on tradition and based on precedent and based on custom. There will never be a democratic body that's going to determine our humanity and our culture. There won't. No one's going to determine it. It's going to be left to the free market. Or it's going to be left to the tradition. So we're conservative libertarians when it comes to that. And Stalinists have always been that. Stalinists have always been that. We don't want anyone's voices to politic. We don't want politics to interfere in this sphere. We want to take care of the forces of production to meet the goals necessary for development and uplifting the welfare of the people, developing the forces of production so people are healthier, are wealthier, they flourish more, they have more to eat, and they have all the things necessary for them to live fulfilling, human, dignified lives. But beyond that, we don't want to fucking... And we don't want anyone, whether democratically at the workplace or authoritative, we don't, we don't even want it to be politically relevant. We want art, for example, we want culture to prevail on the basis of its popularity. So if a certain, let's say, I'm going to tell you, look, look, let's say you're at the factory, right? And Vosh the fat ass comes, I want to democratically decide the type of uh, posters we hang up in the factory. Because what else are you going to democratically decide at a fucking factory? You know, you're not going to be able to decide much. It's going to be determined by necessity. And the only wiggle room you're going to have is culture. You know what my response to Fat Vosh would be? Vosh, the art will be determined by its strength, by its merit. This art will be, will be here on the factory because it's popular elsewhere. It's what the people love. It's what the people want. It's what we believe. We're not going to sit here. There's no need to democratically decide it. There's no need. Why would we need to democratically decide this? When this art is objectively popular, and we don't measure that popularity based on political votes, we measure it based on how many people choose to be, have more of an affinity toward it. People just are drawn to it more. They like it more. So, oh, that's crazy. Look at the fucking internet. You think, okay, you know what these bread tube democratic socialist people want you to believe? They want you to think that the memes that are popular on the internet are popular because we all sat down and democratically decided that way with a vote. No, it's not fucking true. The memes prevailed on their merit. They prevailed because they're good and they're relatable and organically, naturally, they just rose to the top. Vosh and Hassan are the type of people who you're going to sit in a room with and they're going to be like, they're going to tell a joke. And then before anything, they're going to say, okay, let's democratically decide whether I'm funny or not. You can't. You can't decide that. It will happen or it doesn't happen. You're either funny or you're not. And there's no way to control that. The issue here is control. I don't want the authoritarian government to control things in the stead of a democratic decision-making council. I don't want anyone to be able to control it. I want chaos. 
the beauty of chaos. No one will control it. When it comes to culture, because that's what we're talking about here. Because when you have the chaos, you know what you have? You have the natural human tradition and customs and culture develop. You have the real human culture develop. I'm not saying it's going to be like the purge. It's going to be all... No, you only have this cultural degeneracy and this filth and this wisach when you have control. Because people are trying to control shit. When you let go of control, your the culture starts to be defined in a very conservative way. People follow the traditions of their community. They follow the unwritten rules and customs. And that's it. Call us. Say anything, but I'm too dumb to keep my mouth shut. So here we go. This is a silly proposition. Happy Chulo, that's so fucking true. They want to make the workplace among us emergency meetings. And no fucking human being wants that. Human, listen. Human, let me tell you guys. Why is sex such a huge thing in BreadTube? Like, why is it so intertwined with sex? Even Hassan, even Hassan's whole shtick is he's like, you know, he's, uh, he, it's a sex appeal, right? Why is that so important? Think about it. Why? Because as human beings... We don't want to dedicate, sorry, we don't want to dedicate all of our energy to politics. And we don't want to dedicate all our energy to voting and voting and decision. You know what we want to do as human beings? This is the truth. As human beings, we want to literally come crucify me. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to say the truth. As human beings, what we want is we want to find our soulmate. We want to get married. And we want to have kids. And there's a minority of people. There's a minority of... And we want to take... We want to have a family. And we want to take care of our family. And we want to make sure our family's okay. And we want to make sure our kids will be okay. Now there's an exception of people who can't do that or don't want to do that. And that's completely fine. But in the main, that's what drives us. In the main, what drives us is that we individually fulfill our life's purpose. That's what drives us individually. Okay? That's the truth. Do we care about having among us democratic workplace meetings? No, we don't. The reason Vosh's meme about democratic ownership of the workplace is so prevalent is because people also don't want to be abused in a dystopian nightmare uh, scenario. So Vosh is telling, well, the only leverage you have against that from happening is if you, you know, you're always democratically participating. Otherwise, it's going to be 1984. But he's lying to you. He's lying to you. There doesn't have to be any control over that whatsoever. Politics does not have to be relevant to your life whatsoever. For example, and I know not a lot of people are going to like this example, but in China, people don't fucking care about politics. Really, believe it or not, they don't. And people, people in China care about their families, they care about their friends, maybe they care about their communities, and they care about living fulfilling lives. And yes, there are so many selfless and dedicated party cadres and activists within China who do want to spend their lives and dedicate their lives to the whole of society. And that's great. Xi Jinping is one of them. He's one of them. That's the politicians, the people who rule China. But they will always be a minority of people. The majority will never be like that. The majority just want to live dignified human lives. And no, there is no guarantee. Oh, it's going to become. No, it won't become 1984. Okay. It's a fucking lie. That's a fucking lie. And the reason it's a lie is because you've got this idea in your head that power corrupts for its own sake. Power does not fucking corrupt. A lack of power is what corrupts. Power itself does not corrupt. It doesn't corrupt. It doesn't. Statehood is an entirely different art than personal life. That's why people think power corrupts. Because they somehow don't respect the sphere of statehood 
as a reality that demands its own care and attention and participation that is not the personal reality. It's not that people are just selfless. The state is literally a different language than the language of personal gain. It's a different language. Ask any politician. Yes, politicians are corrupt, but it's not their power that corrupted them. It's the absence of power that's corrupted them. It's the absence of courage in relationship to the state. And no one is saying that politics will end in socialism. It, China had a cultural revolution. During the Stalin era, there was a cultural revolution, and the bureaucrats, who were corrupt and complacent, were overthrown. A new generation, new fresh blood took their place. Sure, all of that will continue to happen. But you will not be spending the majority of your life doing that. That's the truth. You don't need to spend your time in a democratic workplace. That doesn't mean you're going to be idle and a complete victim to the state's abuses. Because guess what? This is what the communists understand very well. The state, no matter how much in science fiction they try to tell you the otherwise, the state is not omnipotent. The state is not omnipotent. The state itself comes from the people. And people in communist countries know that. The state isn't some omnipotent force that can do whatever it wants whimsically. It draws its power from the people. It draws its strength from the ability to mobilize regular, ordinary people to fulfill common aims. In China, when they were faced with the coronavirus, it was the effort of the millions and millions of activists that were organized and mobilized at the grassroots level to combat coronavirus. You think the Chinese state has some kind of power separate from the people? The people are its power, and they know that. Hopper the Marxist donated $4.99 through Super Chat. Based and infrapilled. Thank you so much, dude. And they know that over there in China. They know that. It's only here that we don't know that. It's only here that... Blaze donated $5. Utterly and completely based. Thank you so much, Blaze. Appreciate it. Appreciate it so much. Yeah, only here we somehow think the other... We think the contrary. We think otherwise. You don't need to have... Listen. If you treat communism as an extension of liberal rights and an extension of Lockean you know, uh, contract that there is an unconditional guarantee, that there is never an unconditional guarantee. Power in communism becomes suspended in its own material basis in reality. And what that means is that instead of drawing up a paper, a piece of paper that says the people have the right to do this, we will democratically decide every single thing. It's actually what happens in reality. There's no paper guaranteeing it because it's actually the reality. It's actually the reality that the state is drawn from the people. That's actually the reality. It becomes the reality. But BreadTube wants to deceive you and make it seem like communism is this extension of liberalism. But here's the truth. While they're trying to avoid the suspicions that ordinary people have that communism is a dystopia, they're the ones creating in their own imaginary, imagination the most evil totalitarian dystopia you could, that you could even fucking ever imagine. Can you imagine your family... And your family's reality being determined and being controlled by a random group of strangers based on their democratic decision making. You as an individual and you and your family will always be the minority. I mean, you will always be one person. Your family will only be one family among many others. So when people just make collective decisions and collectively act, they are not collectively acting based on you. They're collectively acting based on some kind of collective reality, just like social media. Could you tolerate Twitter, the Twitter mob, 
democratically deciding and controlling every aspect of your life? Could you handle that? Could you imagine that? Imagine you go to work and the Twitter mob decides what your workplace is going to be like and how you're going to do that. It'd be a fucking nightmare. It'd be a fucking nightmare. And that's what Brett Tube is talking about here when they talk about workers owning the means of production. Because at the end of the day, the workers are literally millions and millions and millions of people who will never be somehow personal or familiar to you. They're millions of anonymous strangers. And the outcome of their decision is going to be so removed from the consequences that are going to be felt at the individual level that it may as well be some kind of totalitarian, you know, big brother making all the decisions for you. What communists with a capital C believe, contrary to BreadTube, is that the overwhelming majority of the decision making regarding the means of production and the forces of production should first and foremost be based in the expertise of people who fucking understand it. It should be based in scientific means, objective, neutral means that are not about human subjectivity. Objectively, this is how things should be produced. Objectively. Now, you may say, well, in China, it's not based in that. They have a market. Well, actually, no, because in China, they have very wisely taken into account the fact that people and the relations of production are also an objective reality. So how much control you're going to have over this reality you're deciding over, you have to scale it back. You're not going to control things at the micro level, at the personal and individual level. You're not going to be able to control that. But planners and people who dedicate their lives to understanding this will be able to decide the course the country will take um, it will set broad goals, and the whole country will work together to fulfill those goals. And those goals aren't going to be based on someone's personality. They're not going to be based arbitrarily on uh, random decisions. Mushroom donated $10. Based and Dugan pilled. Thank you so much, Mushroom. Appreciate it. You know what they're going to be based upon? Reality itself. They're going to be based on the objective reality itself. And what's so wrong with that? When you go to the doctor, do you feel like you have to democratically decide what the doctor diagnoses you with? No, because the doctor spends his life caring about this shit, so you don't have to. And what communists want, when all that is taken care of, you're, a whole lot of reality is left. What does culture look like? What does it look like to raise a family? What, is, what do communities look like? What does art look like? What does... What do the everyday interactions between people look like? What does the culture look like? What does the workplace, yes, the workplace culture look like? The, the, the way, and you know, the microaggressions, the micro things. You know what the communists say? That's not a matter of politics. You're not going to vote on that. You're going to determine it as a human being. And it's going to, the result is going to be based on their human reality. The normal human reality. We are not going to control that reality. We're not going to impose rules uh, from the top down or from the bottom up on that reality. We're going to let the laws of nature, the laws of humanity, emerge and flourish naturally. The way families are going to look is going to be based on, on what works for human beings at the everyday level. And if it worked for your grandparents... And if it worked for your parents and their grandparents and their grandparents, well, shit, maybe there's something about that that's uh, not just arbitrary and, and, you know, completely up to us to decide willfully. Maybe there's something unconscious about it. But that's, so be it. That will be the reality. And sure, there's a lot of problems in society and people can be mobilized to address problems. One of those problems is domestic violence. Another problem is alcoholism. Those are all pro things we can agree are horrible problems in society. And to the extent that on an unconscious, 
intuitive and human basis we can agree upon that, society will be mobilized to combat these evils. That's what happened in the Soviet Union. That's what happened in China. Now, many people want to give you this false idea that in the Soviet Union in China, it was a totalitarian 1984 uh, bureaucracy deciding and determining everything. That's a blatant lie. Those societies on the ground were extremely libertarian societies culturally. They were very libertarian. Things were based on the customs and culture of the community. The government didn't decide that. What decided that was your culture, was the culture of your family and your, your, your grandparents and their parents. Completely natural human reality. It's only in America where they're trying to artificially create new cultures from scratch and impose that on you. At the expense of what you know in your human instincts. We know in our human instinct a lot of things that they, people in universities, are trying to impose on us that we just know are wrong. We know in our hearts what's right or wrong, and they're trying to come and impose this shit on us that we know is fucking wrong. The communists have nothing to do with that. Communists are on the side of humanity. Communists are on the side of your human instinct.